Ever wonder how grading multipliers work? It's Adam from Sports Car Collector Chronicles, and today we're going to look at just that. A PSA 10 sells for this, an SGC 10 sells for this, a BGS 9 sells for this. We're going to look at some data and break it down. Let's get to it. Grading multipliers explained. Okay, this conversation happens all the time, right? At the LCS, at a card show, Discord, chat, wherever. PSA 10 sells for this. What does a BGS 9.5 sell for? Vice, a BGS 8, Vice, an SGC 10, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's not set in stone. There's no like perfect formula. A lot of people have tried to break it down. All you can do is use your best guess based on data you know and you have. So to try to explain this in a way that makes sense, I used PSA 10 as my benchmark, right? So that's my X. Everything else would be X minus, X minus, or X plus, X plus, or rather multiples. I used 15 different cards for this test. I used cards from 2013, 15, 19, 21, et cetera, et cetera to try to break it down. Now in the slides, I'm just having one card from a picture perspective, but the multiples you'll see at the bottom are based on an average of those 15 cards. All right, perfect. BGS 10 is actually 1.7 and 2X of PSA 10, but I don't have that one pictured because I couldn't find a great picture of anyone that I really like to put in. So just know BGS 10 is actually 1.7 and 2X, but I think most people realize BGS 10 or BGS 10 black label sell for an exponential amount. I tried to keep all the sales data close, meaning within 30 days as best I could, right? Because what good does it do to show a PSA 10 Aaron Judge that sold in October and one that sold in March as a PSA 9, right? It just wouldn't make any sense. So I didn't do that. I tried to keep it all within roughly 30 days. PSA 10 as the benchmark, again, everything is based on this. So the pictures you're going to see in these slides are based on a 2017 Topps Chrome Aaron Judge rookie. So as you can see here, $81 is what the PSA 10 sold for. Now, counting down, an SGC 10 gem mint. 50 to 55% of a PSA 10 across the board. So as you can see, this one sold for $43. So you're roughly, what, 52 and some change percent. BGS 9.5 True Gem Plus, also about 50 to 55%, sold for $46. I think the thing I found the most interesting when I was doing this is something we saw sort of happening over the in the hobby over the last ooh, year or two is that it used to be right you had a PSA BGS a 9.5 and then you know, battle a little bit for what would be most expensive then we watched PSA 10s pull away right from everything else and we're like oh, oh I personally don't agree with it but the market is what the market is right and that's that's what happened but SGC was always the third fiddle pretty comfortably down now, at least from an SGC 10 perspective, from what I've been able to see mostly across the board is true gem pluses and SGC 10s are pretty close to each other, about the same ballpark. And I found the fact that SGC and BGS are kind of doing one of these from a level perspective to be very uh, interesting. Might mean that uh, you know, your SGC slabs uh, could be going up in value over the long haul. BGS 9.5 True Gem, not the True Gem Plus, was about 45 to 50%. So as you can see in this one, it was like 38.90. BGS 9.5 Gem Mint was about 45 to 50% of a PSA 10. So all the BGS 9.5 family of cards, right? So your uh, 9.5 gem mint, your uh, true gem and your true gem plus are between 45 and 55 percent of the PSA 10. 
SGC 9.5 Mint Plus. It's about 30 to 35 percent of a PSA 10. As you can see here, it's like 26 bucks. Uh, still showing that, like from a number perspective, 9.5 anyway, that the uh, it is lower, right, than a BGS 9.5, but it should be because an SGC 9.5 is a Mint Plus, while a BGS 9.5 is a Gem Mint. So, not, yeah, again, not all 9.5s created equal, not all 10s created equal, et cetera, et cetera. PSA 9, surprise, surprise, a quarter of a PSA 10, 20 bucks. Now, in some cards that I looked at, the gap was even bigger. You know, it was maybe 20%, but on the average, it was about 25% of a PSA 10. So, uh, a little more than raw, but not, not much. Uh, which is a whole topic for a separate video I'm going to do sometime in the next couple of weeks. But one thing that's really concerned me is that there used to be a big gap, right, between uh, a raw card and a PSA 9. Because, I mean, you're talking about a mint, you know, a mint, mint plus card, and it's guaranteed as that. It's already slab. It's done. And people are buying uh, raw and PSA 9 at basically the same price, hoping that they'll be able to send it in and get a PSA 10. But the fact that a nine and a raw are about the same doesn't really make any sense to me. Kind of what I might be thinking longer run, right, is I think there will be a return for PSA 9 back to its place and market, comfortably above raw, comfortably below 10, as it should be comfortably below 10. But maybe it's a good time to go pick up a bunch of PSA 9 slabs and, and, and hold on to them. Right, for a, a longer hurl and hope that that return happens. PGS 9, whopping 18 to 22% of a PSA 10. Not overly surprising, right? But here you go. The uh, thing is about $81, PSA 10 sold for. And you're talking about 17 bucks. But hey, you know what? At the end of the day, you like the card, pick it up. Who cares? But from a selling perspective, about 18 to 22%. So again, I did this with 15 different cards. I didn't bother to list them all down. That's not really the point here. And what I'm hoping to do is choose one, show you guys, and break it down, give you a rough multiplier to work with, knowing not everything is perfect, not everything is exact, but gives you a ballpark idea of difference between PSA 10, uh, BGS 95, SGC 10, so on, so on, so on. I didn't do HGA and I didn't do uh, CSG. Maybe the next time I will, uh, I'll try to find, I'll probably only be able to do that with a couple of cards though, right? Because it's going to be hard to find cards that are across the board been graded for um, all those companies. But we will give it a shot as best we can. Another intention of this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this same Aaron Judge card and once a year, I'm going to come back and try to redo this and see what differential we're seeing, right? Because if I use the same card, the same time frame, I'll come back you know, next year, same time, January, February, do the same deal so there's no delineation or anything like that, and we'll see what we get. Uh, hopefully, you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. We'd love to have you come back and talk to us some more. Hopefully, this helped you out, and have a great day.